I mean, they hate it. Oh yeah, that's a full belly. Hey friends, today we are making some updates to our rabbit pen. We need a new rabbit hutch for these mamas because they are having babies. So when we set up our rabbit pen, we had this really cool design in mind. I know, I know, the babies. Babies! They really, truly think that they are starving to death. They're not. They're not starving to death. They're just fine. <laughs> You're not starving to death. Go eat grass with the mamas. Bottle babies, am I right? I mean, once you've had bottle babies, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they are underfoot every day, day in, day out. Okay, like I was trying to say though, we have to make some updates to our rabbit pen because we had this really cool idea when we got started for nesting boxes using some five gallon buckets and tubing and then we buried it behind mulch and dirt. It was awesome. The rabbits disagreed. They thought it was garbage and treated it as such. They dug all the mulch out. They ripped all the tubes off the boxes. They knocked over the buckets any chance they had. I mean, they hate it. And whenever our first mama had a litter of kits, she just totally ignored them because that was not where she wanted to put her babies. So it's time for a revamp, a new idea. So come see what we've got in store. So now anytime we're having to revamp, start over, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. And so we always try to go back to how do other people do this? So for rabbits, the typical answer is, I mean, the typical answer is people do it in cages and we bucked that one right out the gate. So, but typical nesting boxes for rabbits are these wooden structures. I'll, I'll put a picture up here so you guys can see. They're just a really nice, simple wooden box with, uh, with an opening kind of towards the top diagonal. And that way the mamas can get in and out easy, but the babies can't get out, which we're realizing now that we have a nest that's kind of on the ground is a dilemma. You don't want those babies getting out all the time because humans then have to go put the babies back where they belong and it's just it's a little bit difficult especially if we were to have a cold night or something we don't want babies out of the nest so we knew that we had a few different elements we wanted to incorporate in this new design of nesting boxes so my very clever husband had the idea can we create something that uses a four by eight sheet of plywood so that was our starting point and we designed a really simple colony style <laughs> times six uh, rabbit nesting box. So it's a system of six boxes all together. Oh my goodness, you're so ridiculous. <laughs> it's a system of six boxes all together that uses a sheet of plywood. We're going to use a few wood scraps here and there, but the bulk of this is just going to be this one sheet of plywood. So here's a quick snippet of how we're doing our cuts. Time to fire up the saw. So the first thing we did was cut that plywood sheet into four sections, the front, the back, the lids, and the dividers. Then we took the sections for the lids and the dividers over to the chop saw and cut them into each individual piece. All right, wood is cut, but the children need food. So we have to take a break, feed the children, then we'll be back at it. What are you crazy people doing? Oh, of course, resting in the rocks. Are they uh, extra comfy rocks? Oh, good. And that is the story of our lives. All right, let's go find your sister. Renan, are you in the shop? Come on, let's go find your baby sister and then eat some dinner. Why do we need to wash our hands? Why do we need to wash our hands? Hmm, let's think about that. <laughs> Come on, cutie. All right, kids are fed, back to work. The last thing before we started assembling was to get that front plate finished. I needed to divide it into six equal sections, and then I grabbed a big aluminum can that I could use to draw out some circles, which would be our openings for each of the rooms. From there, Logan took over and used a drill bit to get the holes started and his jigsaw to cut out the circles. 
All right, so I think that we have everything cut and ready to go now. We have our front panel and back panel. Front panel has holes in it, back panel solid. We have a roof for the top. There is no bottom because we want them right on the ground. That helps with drainage because we don't want urine sitting in the nest all the time. We want that to drain away in the soil. And then we've got all of our sides and interior pieces. I just finished cutting some two by twos that we can use as um, basically like the blocking. You know, screwing plywood into plywood is not super strong because all of the wood is so, so thin. So we like to put um, things like two by twos in the corners so that we can screw our plywood into a two by two instead. It does take up a little bit of the room um, inside, but worth it for stability. And now we assemble. After we had the two outside pieces well attached, it was time for the interior dividers. And the very last step was attaching the lids with hinges. I wanted to be able to look inside and see if a nest was in use and check on those babies really easily, but still have them nice and covered, keep them warm in the winter and cool in the summer. So these hinged lids were awesome. We did wanna make sure that there was a little bit of room for ventilation around the top. So when we attached the hinges, I used some shims just to create a tiny bit of gap around the top. And with that, the rabbit hotel is finished and ready to go into the rabbit pen. Now, by the time we finished this project, it was late at night. And so it wasn't until the next day that we had the opportunity to get it moved over and into the rabbit pen. It's the next day. We finished the hutch last night, but just goodness, could not get it out to the rabbits. Thankfully, it's raining today. <laughs> Thankfully, it's not broken. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's sturdy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this time. If it's not one thing, it, it's another. So how projects go. Like how the gate isn't even open yet? Like how the gate isn't even open yet. Okay, so we're getting the hutch moved in. We also realized that these poor rabbits could use a lot more shade once the summer is heating up. It's already, you know, it's, <laughs> it's May and it is already over 90 in the afternoons here in Texas. And so we recognize that it's gonna get well over 100 and these poor rabbits need better shade. They're already under shade, but you know that west afternoon sun coming in we wanted that to be blocked too so we're in addition to giving them their hutch we're gonna give them a whole lot more shade boards as well but my top priority was definitely in getting these babies into their new home so we got the new rabbit hotel moved first as soon as I had it in place I wanted to go ahead and make sure those babies were nice and comfy so I grabbed all of the hay mixed with their mama's fur and lined that nest box with it I knew that was our best chance of mama finding them because it smells like her. Once I had the fur in, then it was time to move the babies over. Oh, one's escaping. <laughs> yeah. We feel so fortunate that this first time mama has been able to keep and feed all eight of her babies so well. They are doing great. Once I got them all in there, I went ahead and put a little extra hay on top just to make sure they were warm and cozy. All right, so the big thing now is we need to make sure that Mama Rabbit finds her babies tonight because if she can't find her nest, I just am gonna have to move them back. But there's an easy way to test. We'll just make sure that those bellies are all full when we come check them in the morning. If they're not full, that means Mama did not come and feed them. We'll have to move them back. But I'm hoping for the best. We moved all of her fur over, so the smell should be gone from the old spot. It should all be in the new spot, and so I'm hoping she'll be able to find them just fine. The very last piece of our rabbit pen renovation was to put up our new shade wall. Thankfully, this piece came together so easily. Putting up these fence pickets was a breeze, and we didn't even have to cut anything. It was awesome. 
All that's left to do is wait until morning and make sure Mama Rabbit found her babies overnight. Good morning, friends. It is the next morning. We are back in our new and improved shady rabbit hutch, or rabbit pen. It's time to check on these babies and see if they got fed last night. I see a movement, so I know they're in there still. Let's see. All right, first of all, let's see who's escaping. All right. Let's take a look at your belly. That's not the fullest belly in the world, but it is definitely one that's been fed. Oh yeah, that's a full belly. Excellent. Well, I am thrilled by that. I was a little bit nervous. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a pudgy fill belly. That's a belly with a lot of milk in it. So I am thrilled by that. I was a little bit nervous that Sage might not find them and come feed them. So I'm beyond thrilled that they clearly have been fed. Mama knows where they are and they're in a really nice safe spot. Not on the ground where they might get stepped on, but in a box where they can't even get that far from the nest. So I know that they're gonna stay nice and toasty warm in there. So thrilled by this. Well, thank you guys for joining us on this adventure. We have had just the best luck with rabbits so far and we've loved everything about it. We've you know, had to tweak some things from how we were doing it the first time to how we're doing it now, but it's been a great experience. We're loving it. So I'm so excited to keep you guys updated on rabbit uh, changes and updates ahead. For the time being, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss our next video. And thank you guys for watching.